So what does it mean to be a coward? Hey everyone, welcome back to Andrew's Wizard of the Reads. And as always guys, I'm Andrew, and today guys, today I have got a book review for you. But before we get to that book review, make sure you're liking and subscribing, hitting that bell notification so you can get regular updates for when I put out new content. Also make sure you're checking that description box down below for the link to the Wizardly Duo Discord as well as links to all my social media and information about my Patreon. And that said, today's book review, guys, is The Coward by Stephen Aryan. This is put out by Angry Robot Books. And guys, just look at this cover. This first came to my attention, I think like six or seven months ago because of the cover, like everybody was freaking out. It's like minimalist, but it's got this like bronze sword. It's got the filigree. And then it's got this guy just down here, just kind of in a, in a hero pose. And I just, I absolutely love this cover. And what can I say about this book other than the fact that I absolutely loved it? Will everybody love it? Probably not. But what this is, this is an homage to that like late 80s, early 90s heroic fantasy in the style of sword and sorcery. Like David Gemmel fans will have a lot to love here. As well as I think Abercrombie fans. I think Abercrombie fans will find uh, something to enjoy here as well. Uh, kind of going off of that vein, like it's really cool to see the inspirations here because it's very, very evident. And you know, Abercrombie was very much inspired by David Gemmel. And this has kind of done the the other thing where like you could tell Stephen Aryan was a huge Gimmel fan. And but he also liked, you know, First Law. And so he kind of wrote a book paying homage to Gimmel, but then used a little bit of Abercrombie flair to spice it up a little bit and made something all his own. I if they were still doing the Gimmel Award, this would have won one hands down. Like I think our, Stephen Aaron is the successor to David Gemmel when it comes to heroic fantasy. This could have easily been a Dronai book, guys. Easily. I loved it. Now that said, what is it about? Well, let's read the back of the book. Who will slay the evil in the frozen north, saving all from death and destruction? Not Calcrassia. He's done his part. Calcrassia is a legend, a celebrity, a hero. Aged just 17, he set out on an epic quest with a band of wizened fighters to slay the Ice Lich and save the world. He returned victorious, but alone. Ten years have passed and Kel lives a quiet life while stories of, of his heroism are told in taverns across the land. But now, a new terror has risen in the north. Something has taken up resident in the Lich's abandoned castle beyond the frozen circle. And the ice is beginning to creep south once more. For the second time, Cal is called upon to take up his famous sword, Slea, and battle the forces of darkness. But he has a terrible secret. Kel was never a hero. He was just lucky. Everyone puts their faith in Kel, the legend. But he is just a coward who has no coward who has no intention of risking his life for anyone. And there's actually a lot to unpack there because what I love about this most is the themes that are explored within this novel. Uh, basically, Kel su uh, suffers from survivor's guilt. He has PTSD. He is he he doesn't consider so himself a hero. He just lucked out. Because 10 years prior to the start of the story, he was 17, as the back of the book says, and he joined up to fight this great evil, and he joined some, like, you know, renowned heroes. And all of them died on the journey, except for him. He dealt the killing blow, but he just considers himself, like, lucky. Like, he didn't know how to fight, he didn't know how to venture, he didn't know how to survive, he had no survival skills, anything like that. And so, like, he's just, like, this very damaged hero which makes sense. It takes these modern concepts of like, you know, heroes, they still suffer from PTSD and survivor's guilt and every, like you see this in soldiers today, but it's never really addressed that heavily in modern fantasy. Well, Stephen Aryan decides to take a stab at it. And I think he does an amazing job. Like Kel is a very, very great uh, character. And it's funny because I don't consider Kel to be a coward. I consider Kel to be a realist. Uh, he's very much like, 
no, nah, like I'm a human. I'm just a dude who got lucky. I, I don't want to go do this. And he's just like, I did my part. I've suffered enough. I've watched people die. I've experienced horrors. None of these people believe. It's very, very interesting. And so as Kel starts at going out on this adventure, because he's called back to service, very, very reluctantly, uh, he has to kind of pull together a new band of heroes. And it creates this great found family aspect of, you know, adventuring through adversity builds bonds. And it's very, very interesting. Uh, one character that I want to touch base on is Garen, and I think I'm saying this correctly. Garen serves as a foil to kind of let the, it lets the whole story come full circle, because Garen is 17, and he want you know, he wants to go make his legend, and he sees Kel, this hero, who, had, you know, is renowned throughout the taverns and the five kingdoms as being the savior of, you know, the, the realm. And Kel's like, nah, dude, you're making a mistake. You're a punk kid. You have no idea what you're getting yourself into. Trust me, I've been there. Stop. Turn back. Save yourself. And Garen, which, like, you know, these are the things that, you know, Kel wished he had heard when he was a kid. And so he, um, you know, he gives this wisdom to Garen. Garen's not having any of it. Garen's like, you don't know what you're talking about. You're a coward. No, 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 no. I'm going to tell everybody and I'm going to expose you. I'm going to be the hero like any punk kid can do. And we just get to watch this journey unfold as Kel goes on this journey of rediscovery. He gets to analyze himself. He gets to kind of re-experience his life, you know, because, you know, the past is innumerable. And that's actually said with, that's taken from the text. The past is innumerable. But you can analyze it and you can see what could you have done differently? Did everything happen the way it's supposed to? And, you know, are, did you do the best that you could? And was Kel just lucky? And it's just so fascinating. There is another through line here because this is a duology. Book two, The Warrior, does come out in August, which I'm super excited because I love this so much. Um, I'll give you my rating right now. I gave this a five out of five. Like, don't get me wrong. There are some things that are done within the heroic fantasy genre that don't hold up necessarily in modern fantasy. I loved it because uh, heroic fantasy will just do a thing. Like, it's a very sword and sorcery thing where it's just like, and this is happening. And I'm going to make this crass comment. And we're just going to not analyze that at all. It's a very, very, very common for the subgenre that this book is a part of. And I was here for it. Uh, one of the really, really interesting things is uh, there is a through line uh, of a outside kind of peripheral story that is following the Church of the Pilgrim. And the Pilgrim is this belief that basically we follow the Reverend Mother. I want to say her name is Britak. She's this old wizened kind of popish character. Uh, she serves as like the head of this church and it's, she's very much a religious zealot of, like, the ends justify the means. Anything I can do to bring people to the faith is justified as long as I serve my penance. And, like, she does the whole, like, uh, does anybody remember, was it Angels and Demons? Where you've got that, like, albino pope who's, like, beaten and lashing himself uh, in Dan Brent. Like, anyway, she does that kind of stuff, like, to serve her penance. And as long as she does that and, like, makes sure to, like, purify herself any act she's done can be justified. And she is absolutely just terrifying to watch because she's very much an ends justify the means sort of character. And so I think we're going to see more of that explored even further in The Warrior, which again comes out in August, and I cannot wait to get my hands on it. I am going to try and get my hands on an arc for that because I am so, so excited. I feel like this is a ramble, praising review and I don't even care because, guys, I think if you love David Gimmel, if you love Joe Abercrombie, if you love heroic fantasy, if you love sword and sorcery, this is the book for you. I could not put it down. It's funny because my reading experience went like this. Um, I set aside chunks to read. And after about four days of reading that, I had reached 50%. And then I just threw caution to the wind and said, I have to consume the rest of this book now. So the first 50% took me five days to read the second 50 percent i couldn't restrain myself anymore i read it in two days i loved it and it's not that particularly long of a book it's only 400 pages but the story arc makes sense um one critique that you may have for this story is a lot of the battles 
feel very much like encounter based kind of like you know remember in the old um rpgs were like final fantasy like you take 15 steps and you'd run into an enemy a lot of the times the battles can feel like that but it is addressed and explained within the story so i think it makes sense and it's perfectly fine uh again i've told you 14 times probably that i love love the coward by Stephen Aryan. I am going to be reading the rest of his backlog. He has two other trilogies. I think it's like Age of Madness or like Age of Darkness and something like that. But it's two trilogies set in the same world that is separate from The Coward. I will be picking those up uh, at some point and I will be reading those because at this point, like after just one entry, I think Stephen Aryan is going to be an auto buy author for me. I cannot wait to experience more of his work. Please, please. Do yourself a favor, pick this one up. It's well worth it. Uh, that said, guys, that's really all I've got for you. So, till next time, peace out. Stay magical. Bye. And as always, I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons.